Hi, it's Professor S. And for the next five minutes or so, I want to continue talking about protein conformation. And I'm going to talk about protein's quaternary structure, but I need to begin from a slightly different point of view. And that's to take a moment to talk about how language usage evolves in science. And I specifically want to talk about these two terms, protein, polypeptide. You've probably noticed I use them somewhat interchangeably, which is not the most appropriate thing to do, but a lot of us do it uh, as an artifact of our past education and actually not as an artifact of biological history. The thing is with organic molecules like proteins, we've known about the existence of protein, many of its functions in cells, and its chemical composition as in what elements are in it for longer than we've known about its physical structure, the way in which those elements are actually arranged. Now that's actually significant because there was this assumption from the beginning that proteins were singular molecules. And it turns out that that's not really the case. See, if we go back through protein structure for a second, there's the primary structure, which is the unique sequence of the 20 different amino acids, uh, however many of them are used in whatever order, to form the polypeptide. That primary structure is folded using hydrogen bonds and the backbone. So the polypeptide is folded into things like the alpha helix. And then the secondary structure is folded again at the tertiary level, which is again the polypeptide being folded using forces associated with the side chains into that globular or fiber structure. Again, this is all the polypeptide. The actual functioning protein though is almost always more than one polypeptide. And so at, up to this point, I've actually only been talking about polypeptides, even though I've very often used the term protein and polypeptide interchangeably. Depending on the biologist you're dealing with, that may be an unforgivable sin, or it may just be part and parcel to doing biology. I'm definitely in the second camp, but you should be aware that, strictly speaking, the single molecule is the polypeptide, and the finished product at the quaternary level is the protein. So let's take a look at what that means. You may recognize this molecule from my tertiary structure video. This is my attempt at rendering beta hemoglobin. As good as the ribbon models are and as easy on the eyes as they are relative to if we showed every single atom, when we start to look at cellular functions and try to diagram out processes, they're still much, too much. If we're trying to simplify and explain biological processes in cells, we really need a simpler, cartoonier version of this. And, and we do it. We just kind of create an outline like so, and then we'll just delete that ribbon. And uh, let's go ahead and delete it now and kick that guy on over to the side. All right, so now to my left, we have a cartoon beta hemoglobin. Now, actual hemoglobin protein, the protein in red blood cells that transports oxygen and carbon dioxide, isn't just one beta hemoglobin. It's actually made of four polypeptides, only two of which are beta hemoglobin. Uh, so actual functioning hemoglobin is made of two beta hemoglobins and two alpha hemoglobins. It's that combination of all four that give us the final functioning version of the protein, which is the quaternary structure. So let's go ahead and assemble those four polypeptide subunits. All right, here we go. There is our functioning hemoglobin protein rendered from two alpha and two beta subunits. Again, each of the subunits is an individual polypeptide. Protein quaternary structure is the final assembled protein in which multiple polypeptides are connected using exactly the same forces as we saw at the tertiary level. So ionic bonding involving side chains, hydrogen bonding or hydrophobic exclusion involving side chains. Uh, disulfide bridges involving side chains. The difference between tertiary and quaternary is that tertiary we were folding one polypeptide by forming those forces within that polypeptide, whereas at the quaternary level they are between polypeptide molecules. And there you have protein quaternary structure. Hi, 
This is Professor S. And I'm Big Al. I really liked that last video. I thought it was pretty good. Me too. Hold on. Something's not right here. What's wrong? My hands. Where are my hands? I don't know. I'm just a sock. Well, if I don't have my hands, how will they know what I'm saying? How awful. Yes. Well, here's a couple more videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see all his new videos as they come out. Alright, where are my glasses? And who took my socks? Uh, oh. We have to go now.